Another thing that I decided to, to evolve for me to see how I can move further in the next consciousness and in the holomital collective intelligence came through food. So I guess, of course, lots of people in this room have the same question. It came, it broke down for me, it boiled down to two questions, two main questions. First, what kind of food will make me thrive in my, you know, physical being, will make me lighter, will offer me a higher state of consciousness, will shift my consciousness or help me shift it? And what kind of food can also support others? If I take this food, it supports people, it supports the environment, it supports everyone. So not the extraction food, the food we take from something, from somewhere, or from someone, or from some being. And it led me to eat raw food, or what we call live food as well. And I really discovered uh, how I could you know, have a much better, I mean, a fantastic health and um, do lots of sports and physical activity. I mean, really improve everything at all level. And having the satisfaction that when I threw away the, um, the packaging, <laughs> the packaging of a banana, <laughs> I can throw it away. And I feel happy to throw it away, right? And also, this kind of food means that we support ecosystem. We have to do, to create more ecosystems if we go into live food. So I felt very happy with this step. And I don't say, I don't claim it as the ultimate solution, but my point here consists in sharing how important that step we have to make in our personal growth to really go deep in food, because food works exactly like the matrix. It keeps us in a certain set of behaviors, a certain set of thinking, a certain set of uh, economic relationship with others, a certain set of karma, with the rest of the world. So evolving food also became for me a super important thing about the we in the I. Another big topic, um, I shared a little bit about technology earlier. I spoke a lot about you know, networks and the internet and social wear and community wear. Well, we can see it even deeper than, than that. Look, uh, just remember the writing. The writing, if we, you know, we can do the writing to pay our taxes, to write just a note, you know, the conventional writing, to do our shopping list and all those things. But we can also use the writing for higher consciousness, savagery, poetry, you know, and all, I mean, many, many pieces in the world where you can see that people who wrote those things really went into a discipline that this technology forces to have and also shared that kind of uh, consciousness with others. The internet offers the very same kind of shift and I learned how to shift myself with that. For instance, when I, when I make a tweet, when I use Twitter, let make, let's take a very concrete example. I could do it the old way, like okay, I have to do my X number of tweets today to maintain my social network because I want to maintain a social network. And then I just put more load onto myself. Oh, and I have to read this thread of tweets in order to, because I follow people and, oh, okay. Or I can do it differently. I can say, I will tweet, and I'm, I will tweet now because I feel it right and I feel joyful about it. And I will send this tweet and this thought that I want to share with other people. Or, I will read this thread of tweets now, because I feel open to that. And of course, I will just spot right on the right tweet that I need to read right now, that will connect me with the right people, and that will have you know, a whole array of consequences, like improving my knowledge, connecting to people, finding a new project, who, who knows what. But something that will happen right. I can also send a question to my network and activate hundreds if not thousands of people with their collective intelligence related to this question. They will connect me with new websites, an answer, a conference, new people who want to contribute and so on. And what I mean by that, if I align myself with my inner joy, if I become available to my being, to my true authentic being, and I go on the internet with the right questions, 
or the right words, then synchronicities will happen. Now, we don't need the internet to have this experience. We have it in the physical life. But why don't we amplify that also with the internet? Because then we can tap into the whole world with the whole humanity. And that means we, bring, we can bring this practice to a much higher level of connectedness with other people. But that means we have to learn this practice. I have to learn how to remain aligned with myself, present to my body in front of a keyboard. I have to learn all these new games that kids play and that, will, that will, they will use later in the next generation as gamification. That means use the gaming attitude to resolve complex questions about society and so on. So you see we can see technology as oh boring, scary, you know, all this usual stuff that I hear. But we can also evolve and do a yoga, the yoga of online technologies, the very same thing. And here, if you guys, you know, if we want democracy, we want diversity, we want integral consciousness, we want integral wealth and all these things, we cannot have it with pyramidal collective intelligence. We cannot have it with conventional money. We cannot have it with the writing alone. We need this new infrastructure, this new social body, this new embodiment of complexity. So I decided myself to evolve technology. And I gave you a couple of examples, and I, give you, I could give you lots and lots of other examples, uh, like using uh, as much as possible open source software. Uh, when I have an online conference uh, or an online call with people, we start with a moment of centering and meditation. We speak from our being first, and then we go in the doing. And with other people, we use online technology to coordinate at a global level complex projects, and so on and so on. All this spiritual practices that we can bring in a very grounded way with the technology. And the last example I'd like to, to share, and maybe the most important for me, uh, and maybe the more complex for me to, to explain, the body. So yes, we all know, I guess in this room, we could all say the, and claim the importance of the body bring, you know, descent into the body, knowledge, wisdom, and so on. But the body still carries the old DNA all the damn time. All the time we have the old DNA. Just look at the way we dress. Could we walk naked outside? What would it create? What about nakedness? Ask yourself this question. I keep asking this question myself all the time. If I feel a fear, like if I go in a meeting, with other people, and someone starts to have a different point of view, or disagrees with me, or even insults me, or interrupts me, or whatever, what happens to my body? I start to contract. I start to have physical, biological response, vital survival response. That means I may have, you know, what I call an equanimous whatsoever, an equanimous psychology, an equanimous state of mind. I have it equanimous usually when I have a conversation with friends, having tea, <laughs> and all these things. But usually when we start to feel threatened by some reason, emotional reasons or physical reasons, then the body starts to contract. And that means that we haven't yet overcome the vital response of the body. We, and so we may have a vital response on a, as a physical level, an emotional level, anger, words, um, understatements, you know, whatever way we may have to play and receive and send very strong forces with people. So, the thing that I have, the, the journey that I have taken for myself consists in trying to have a biological, a physiological state always calm, always at peace, even in the worst aggressive or chaotic context. I have practiced martial arts for a long time and I use that for myself. My point here uh, consists in really stressing the importance of giving some physical training so that wisdom can come in the body. And wisdom means that if a tree comes and falls on me, I don't do that. Mm. Right? 
It means that I can watch the tree, I have all the moments to breathe, I see an environment and I will do the right move and remain calm. And my heart will remain more or less the same. I will have some emotions, but they don't command me. It means that. It means if I go in a meeting room for those, you know, me those meetings that I know about Oroville, where I hear all the time so much, you know, stress and violence and, and frustrations and all these things. Well, what if I go into those meetings and breathe and that I, s I work on my body so that I feel equanimous. My physical body feels equanimous all the time. What kind of practice does it take to go there? If we want to evolve, I really, really think we have to take this practice. Whatever path, martial arts, yoga, classical dance, <laughs> you name it. But find a way so that the body becomes equanimous all the time. So that we don't have just wisdom between friends or wisdom when we sit and meditate in a super safe environment. Wisdom means it should apply when we go into a super unsafe environment with super aggressive or super strong forces at play and then we remain in that state of wisdom. So this body work means a lot to me and I know lots of people here in this room do that but you, sh you may want to explore it with relationship with others and hence the reason why I like martial arts because we put physical forces at play, we put scenarios at play where you have someone you know jumping on you and you can observe, huh, why do I feel so scared about this situation? Why do I feel emotional pain here where we haven't done so many things, but I feel lots of emotions and so on. It gives a great place to observe uh, ourselves.